Hi all, Nick Watts here for We Love Betting. I'm finally tashless uh, as December dawned and uh, I'm kind of hoping that uh, I've shed a few demons uh, along with the moustache because November was a bit of a cruel month when it came to punting. I certainly didn't raise any charity through uh, through my We Love Betting bets uh, as another one of three finished uh, the weekend. I don't want to complain too much uh, but I will say Matt Kilgallen. You owe me a beer. Uh, anyway, let's swiftly move on to December and hopefully I can gather a bit of momentum uh, going into the new year. It is my birthday after all this week, so I'm due a little luck, a little bit of luck, I think. Um, let's start with what I expect to be a rather dour affair. Uh, I certainly wouldn't want to spend my birthday at this match. It's Aston Villa uh, against Stoke. Stoke, hold your hands up. Fan, fantastic form, absolutely brilliant. Uh, recently, I, I belittled them a little bit, and as much that I said it was all based on their home form, they went and won uh, their first away game at, at my expense and West Brom's, of course, as well uh, last weekend. So um, credit to them for that. I, I have to hold my hands up that it's it's four wins of the last five. Uh, only Manchester United can better them over the last six, and you know they've just been really impressive. Um, they kept the most clean sheets at seven. And the defence is second only to Man City. And that really has been the bedrock uh, of this Stoke team because their attack hasn't been particularly spectacular. They actually come up against one of the few teams that have got a worse attack than them uh, in Aston Villa. Villa have uh, got the second worst attack. They've scored just 12 goals in their 15 games this season. Stoke scored 14. So you're talking about two low-scoring teams. We've already talked about Stoke's defence. And the fact that under two and a half uh, goals that comes in at four to six is no surprise when you consider that 73% of Villa games have been unders and 80% of Stoke games have gone that way. It's it's just a touch too skinny for me to be tipping up for We Love Betting, although I actually don't think it's a, it's a terrible bet, even at four to six. Um, you know, when you consider that Villa have failed to score in five of their 15 games, I think only QPR uh, have have got a worse record than that in terms of failing to score in, in matches. Um, I just think there's, there's plenty of reasons uh, to think this is going to be a low-scoring game. And I, I've said it before on previous videos, um, all, all throughout my days at Sporting Bet, I used to talk about how I, I like the half-time draw when it's going to be a low-scoring game or when you expect a low-scoring game. 21-20 to 20 here. Um, and these sides particularly prevalent in, in terms of the half-time table and as much that... Stoke are the half-time drawers. I think I picked it uh, one other time this season and typically it didn't come in. But 9 of 15 games uh, have seen them draw uh, at the break. Villa, if games ended after 45 minutes, Aston Villa would be 7th. And you look at the, the kind of near-dire straits that they're in, certainly the relegation battle that they're in, um, and, you, and you think, you know, Based on their first half performances, they're a much better side than that. They've actually only been losing once at the break, and and for me that makes the halftime draw a nice little pick at twenty one to twenty. Um, moving on, then uh, there's another one here. Uh, Wigan QPR. Uh, I have to say my eyebrows were well and truly raised um, when I uh, when I saw the prices of this game. Uh, I guess everybody's talking about the Harry Redknapp effect effect on uh, on QPR and. You know, I have a, a lot of faith in Harry, but at the same time, we've got to see some improvement from QPR first before we really start to think about backing them at, at the sort of prices that are being banded around. They've been odds on a couple of times this season. Even 11 to 10 last week at home to Villa, I thought was probably a touch too skinny. And they're, they're 21 to 10 here. That's actually a shorter price than Stoke are. Stoke, remember, who are second in the form table, uh, uh, away uh, Aston Villa who, who are struggling and, and now we've got QPR who are away at Wigan um, and, and they're a shorter price of 21 to 10 and for me that's just madness you've got 13 to 10 uh, for, for Wigan to win this game and typically yeah I prefer to bat Wigan at, at big prices particularly away from home the, the performances over recent years don't seem to differ an awful amount whether they're home or away I think they won six games compared to to five away to, to home last season, so I was quite like to get them at the kind of the three to one mark um, rather than you know around even money. But I actually think they should be around even money for this game. And they're thirteen to ten for me. It's it's just too big a price. Their record against sides outside the top five at home this season reads one two, drawn two, 
loss one. So it's it's perfectly reasonable record. Uh, and for me, at, at that price, I just can't resist them, quite frankly. So that's Wigan at 13 to 10. Then finally, uh, uh, in stark contrast to the first game that I picked, uh, which I'm not expecting to be many goals in, I think we could have a bit of a, a goal treat at Goodison Park uh, this Sunday when uh, Everton uh, play host to Spurs. Uh, Everton, of course, been drawing all these games recently, and maybe it's a candidate for another draw, really, in as much that uh, Spurs haven't won uh, at Goodison since about 2007. Uh, they haven't had a particularly great record there. Um, and, you know, seven of their last nine games drawn for Everton suggests that maybe that 12-5 to five is a bet. But I'm going for goals here. Uh, Spurs looking in decent form. Scored three at Fulham, um, which was quite a feat. Uh, they obviously beat Liverpool just before that. Um, say what you want about the performance. They got the result. There's three wins uh, in a row now and, and seem to be back on track. They're scoring goals. Only the Manchester clubs have scored more than they have. They're conceding goals. The uh, the worst defence in terms of goals conceded uh, in the top half of the table. And it's all just all very AVB, isn't it, really? Um, what for me is, is the key point about why I'd go for overs here is actually Everton and the, the change in character for them. 65% of their games last season were under 2.5 goals. And this year we're looking at 60% of their games being over 2.5 goals, around 57% of their home games uh, being uh, over two and a half goals, um, and and that's we saw that at the tail end of last season with the introduction of Jelovic and his success, and now we're seeing Fellaini absolutely on fire this season, scoring goals for fun, looking like a regular Frank Lampard with a, a giant Buffon, of course. Um, so, for me, the big change in character for Everton, the fact that Spurs have scored in every away game, the fact that uh, Everton have only kept one clean sheet at home. A hundred percent of uh, Spurs away games have gone over two and a half goals, and they've had some really big scoring games away. They they tend to really go and try and win these games. And credit to them for that. Uh, it just makes seventeen to twenty for over two and a half goals really stick out for me, uh, and and gets me quite excited about the game on Sunday. To be honest. So just to recap, then starting at the beginning, Aston Villa Stoke. I'm going for the half time draw at twenty one to twenty. I'm going for Wigan to beat QPR, just too big a price for me at 13-10. to 10. And uh, just finally then, over two and a half goals in Everton Spurs, that is 17-20. Cheers.